Welcome to Learning in the Making Live. We are going to get started. Um, and this is a weekly video series where we bring you at home learning opportunities. Um, and each video that we have every week is designed to teach you an important concept or learning outcome in topics like math or English language arts, history, science, engineering, and so much more. This is an opportunity for you to learn about those topics. And we'll, we're gonna lead you through a hands-on activity with materials that you probably have at home. Um, we also publish resources and project guides for each activity in our blog related to these activities. So if you wanna check them out, you should go to our website at makered or makered.org. Um, and if you are an educator, you can share these videos or ideas with your students. If you are a parent or a caregiver, you can watch these videos with your kids. And if you are a youth, we hope that you have fun doing the activities that we present to you on these videos. If you missed any of our videos from previous episodes, like um, sewing saw creatures, mathematical pancakes, making DIY instruments, making zines, or our design or our shoe design challenge, you can also look at those episodes at our YouTube channel or on our website, which you should check out um, after you watch this video, because this video is a two-part series. Um, part one last week was about making animal shelters. So we looked at the shapes in different animal shelters, and then we created some shelters out of newspaper structures. And we asked you all to share your projects with us. And so we just wanted to give a really big shout out to Jackson, who sent us these really amazing photos of his tiger den shelter. I love it because you can see his tiger. He used leaves and newspaper dowels to create his shelter. So we hope that after you watch this second part of this series that you will also share your project with us. Um, and we also are very excited because we have our guest educators back with us today. Um, so if you all can introduce yourselves, that would be awesome. Hi everyone, my name is Cassia Isaac and I'm an early childhood science specialist at UC Berkeley's Lawrence Hall of Science. We are very happy to be back here with you all. Thank you for having us back, Dora. Yeah, we are super excited to be back. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Raina Hamilton. I'm the manager of school programs over at UC Berkeley's Lawrence Hall of Science. Thank you all for joining us again in this two-part series. The Lawrence Hall of Science is a very amazing public science center and hands-on interactive museum located in the Bay Area. So if you want to check out what they're doing, you should check out the links in the description below to see all of the amazing resources that they have for you. But today we are moving on to our second series about shapes. Cassia, can you tell us what today is gonna to be about? Sure. So today's session is called Design It, Build It. We will explore stability in shapes and apply what we learn to design, build, and test structures to see how much weight they can hold. So let's start by getting our materials ready. Do you remember how we made newspaper? Let me show you dowel, dowels before. I remember from last week because I loved the song that you taught us, but maybe we should show our friends who might be watching this video right now how to make them, especially if they didn't see the video from last week. Good suggestion, Dora. All we need is um, paper. I have a newspaper, but you can use any type of paper you can find at home. Reina has hers there too, and so does Dora. And tape, I have masking tape, but if you don't have masking tape at home, you can use scotch tape, anything that will stick to paper. Um, scissors and um, rollers, you know, if you have like a, paper towel roller or a straw, anything that would help you make dowels would do. I have all my materials ready. I've got my newspaper, I've got my straws, I've got my tape. How about you, Dora? I definitely have a lot of newspaper here because I have been saving all the newspaper that comes through my mail instead of throwing away. And I also have some straws. Excellent. I 
think Cassie is going to show us how to roll our newspaper dowel. Are you ready to roll? We're ready. I'm ready. Okay. So let's take our time when making our paper dowels, okay? There will be a total of four steps um, when we make them together. So go ahead and grab a piece of paper. I have, like I said, a piece of newspaper here, but you can use whatever type of paper you have handy. I wanna give people at home some time to get what they need while I show you step number two. <clears throat> So step number two, you are going to place the straw near a corner of the paper, okay? If I don't tape the straw, see what's happening? Rolling down. So I'm gonna tape, tape my straw there. And then what I will do, and again, if you're using a bigger, a bigger roller, you don't need to tape it, okay? Because you can reuse it later to uh, roll more dowels. So after you have your roller at one corner, you're going to fold the corner over the straw. And that helps too when you tape that corner down. And step number two, through, no, three, <laughs> is where you are invited to sing the little song that Dora talked about, if you want. So we're gonna go row, row, row the paper slowly until you get to the other corner. And I should speed up <laughs> and get to step number four, which is when you use a small piece of tape to, take, to secure the dowel closed. Now feel free to continue making paper dowels during this presentation because you, will, you might need, no, actually, you will need at least 12 dowels for um, our design challenge later. So the more dowels you make, um, the better, the more fun you have, okay? So you can make as many as you can. Um, oh, uh, how are your dowels coming along? Reina? Oh, oh, my dowels are coming along. I have, let's see, I was able to make a bunch. So I think, I think I'm ready. And if I need some more, I know how to make them now. Yeah, me too. I have a bunch of paper dowels that I made before this video, so I am ready. Wonderful. Dora, it, what is something you remember from making paper dowels last week, just so we can help the viewers? Well, I remember that my dowels kept coming apart and they were really, really loose. Um, and I felt like if they were loose, they weren't going to be as strong. So I remember that I had to be very patient in rolling my dowel and just like slowly, gradually rolling it into the um, paper so that it would not unravel. Um, what about you, Raina? What do you remember? I remember that I got frustrated. Um, mine unraveled as well, but I remember that uh, I just need to take a break and calm down. And ultimately, like it's only paper, just get another piece. Yeah. And since we are using paper dowels to build stable structures, let's start by connecting the dowels together. Okay. Dora, what is something? you recall about shapes from when you connected uh, the dowels together from last time we built? Well, last time we built, we started out by noticing shapes that animals use in their shelters. So I actually started wondering about, what about shapes we find in like man-made shelters or man-made structures? Hmm, you mean like in houses and bridges? Yeah, kind of like these. I found some photos that I was curious about and wanted to look at. So these. Oh, okay. Yeah, like I noticed the squares on the windows, the garage doors, like a rectangle. 
and even the shapes of the houses. Hmm. Yeah, so that got me wondering mm -hmm. if house, like man-made shelters or structures are using a lot of squares, does that mean that squares are like really stable shapes? Wait, 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 wait. So, but first, like what does stability mean anyway? Great questions. I was uh, thrilled when I was listening to your conversation. I imagine that, okay, a sh uh, that a shape or a structure is stable when it doesn't become wobbly, change its shape or collapse when you apply forces to it. So it sounds like Dora is wondering if we should use squares when building because we see squares used in a lot of structures. Did I hear that right, Dora? Yeah, exactly, that, that was my question. Hmm. So I think that that's a question that can be investigated by making a square and a triangle and then test them. You like that idea, Dora? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sounds good to me. So Reina, could you please connect paper dowels to make your square? Okay. And Dora, how about if you make the triangle? Well, I pre-made my triangles. So I have a triangle right here out of paper dowels. Okay, I'm just attaching the edge to my square. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like, because I, I, I was curious to see how um, I could connect the dowels together and I made a triangle here too. Well, so what I, do you notice about triangles? I'm noticing that in my triangle, it has three sides and it also has these three points. Huh, Dora, just in case you want to add more words in your vocabulary, there is another name for those, uh, you know, points. Uh, they're also called vertices. This is where like the, the lines whoop, meet to form a point or a vertex when it's just one vertex. Pretty cool, huh? Oh, wow, yeah. Okay, so Reina, now I'm curious about you. How is your square coming along? Hey, okay, here's my square. And I'm noticing that it has one, two, three, four sides. And it also has those four points. One, two, three, four. Oh, wait, 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 not points, vertices. Okay, we're really taking the time to observe and reflect. Now, I'm so, I'm so happy. Now, I wonder what you notice when you look at the two shapes closely. So let's take a moment. Okay, Dora, okay. is there anything you would like to, to share from about your observations? I actually noticed when I saw them both together that they're, the space between these two dowels in the square and the triangle are different. Like there's more space here between this square than in the triangle. Oh, wow. Dora, you were noticing that both the triangle and the square have different angles. I wonder if this space is that you, you were talking about, um, these different angles play any role when building a stable structure. Hmm. hmm. That makes me wonder. Maybe we should explore a little bit more about what stability means by testing our shapes. What do we already know about stability? Well, I remember that Kasia just told us that a shape or a structure is stable when you apply like a force to it and it doesn't become wobbly or change its shape or collapse. So Kasia, maybe you could please demonstrate for us how those forces act on structures because I'm only gonna believe it when I see it. Wait, wait, wait. Forces like what? Well, forces like wind or maybe the weight of a roof. So let's think of the, the weight of a roof first, okay? 
you wouldn't want the roof crashing down on your house, would you? No way. <laughs> so I have a sponge here to demonstrate a force called compression. Are you ready? So you can see what happens when some weight, I'm gonna use my hand here, okay. is applied to the sponge. What, what do you notice happening to it? It's smashing and squishing. Okay, I definitely don't want that to happen to my house. That is not safe or stable. Exactly. So remember, we are building stable structures that can hold weight. So we want to make sure our structure can withstand several forces so it doesn't collapse, okay? Oh, okay, that makes sense. So sh shall we see how we stable the, the triangle and the square R? Which one do you predict will keep its shape when we apply forces to it, Reina? Can you hold yours up again, Cassia? So I can see. Yes. Which one? Hmm. I'm not sure, sure, but I think because I see a lot of squares in construction, like those pictures that Dora shared with us that I saw, I saw a lot of squares. So I'm going to predict that the square is going to be able to be stable and not collapse or compress. How Thank about you, Dora? Well, I actually think that the triangle is going to be a little bit more stable because the sides of the space or the angle, Cassia just taught me this word angle, between these two sides is a lot smaller than the angle between these two sides on the square. So I think that using paper dowels, a triangle will actually have more stability. Oh. Okay, so how about if you both show us how how you're going to test your shapes to find that out. Okay, so here's my square. Wait, mine's moving all over the place. I don't want my house to do this. What about Dora's? Well, I'm trying to compress my square as much as possible by applying force to it. And I actually don't see it, like it's not moving that much. Like it keeps its shape. Huh. That's so surprising. The triangle yeah. kept its shape, but my square is totally collapsing. I see that you were surprised and testing the shapes helped you to change the way you were thinking before, didn't it? And yeah, by, by the way, the shapes that we just explored and tested are called two-dimensional shapes, the shapes that are flat, okay? We call two-dimensional shapes. Hey, I don't want my structure to be flat. Yeah, I don't want a structure that's flat either. <laughs> totally agree. That's not just practical. That's why we are now going to explore three-dimensional shapes. Dora, could you please post some pictures for us to have an idea? Yes, yeah, so I have these pictures of three-dimensional shapes. Okay, so I see a cube, I see a tetrahedron, oh, a triangular pyramid, and then I see a pentahedron, a square pyramid. Wonderful. And now I, that gave me an idea that might help us to investigate as a team. Okay, Reina, mm -hmm. would you please build a cube? And Laura, could you please build the pentahedron and I will build the tetrahedron and we'll show you um, how we are going to test it. I can do that. Yeah. Thank you. And maybe people viewing this video at home can try to build all three of these shapes. Yeah, I can definitely press pause and try to build. So I have my cube or parts of my cube. I'm using squares to build this three dimensional shape. Let's see. 
bottom has four dowels connected. The top has four dowels connected. And just adding some more dowels and tape. I love tape. <laughs> Me too. So I'm building the pentahedron. And I noticed that the base of this pyramid is a square. Hey, Raina, wait. Both of the 3D shapes that we're building have a square base. I wonder if they're both going to be stable if they have squares. You're right. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we're just going to have to see. We'll build it and we'll do some testing. Yeah. And, uh, Dora mentioned about pyramids. I think I'll use a, a triangle to build a triangular pyramid or a tet tetrahedron. A cube. Um, triangles. There are a lot of like new fancy words that we're using to be able to describe our shapes. Yep. You know how, I, how much I love language. So I, I researched on, on the words pentahedron, tetrahedron, and they are actually, I don't know if this relates, but maybe it does because it's so good to learn new, different languages. And even when you learn mathematics, you can learn different languages. So would you like to, are you curious to find out more about those two uh, words? Sure. Okay, so I'm glad. Um, so I learned that uh, pentahedron comes from uh, the Greek language and um, pen, pentra means um, five. Oh. And hedron means basic. Isn't that amazing? Wow. So I wonder what that means when we build our shape, our 3D shapes. Yeah, I definitely love math because it is like learning a whole new language and a whole new way of describing everything that we see around us in the world. Yeah. So I have my pentahedron. Awesome. I have my cube. And I think Cassia. Oh, that's coming along. And I have my te tetrahedron. So I'm noticing that our 3D shapes all have a different number of sides. Oh, Dora, this might surprise you because it surprised me. I learned that when we, um, when we build 3D shapes, we no longer call these sides. We, uh, we use the word faces. English language is so funny at times. Oh, okay, faces. Oh, thank you for letting me know, Cassia. So if these are faces, Reina, how many faces does your cube have? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh. And a, tet my, and a tet tetrahedron has one, two, three. Wait, did I forget? Hmm, because it's supposed to to have four faces, because- uh, You forgot the bottom. Tetra means four. Yeah, the bottom, right here. Uh, <laughs> what, if, what about the pentahedron? Well, I remember Kasi just said that penta means five. So I have one, two, three, four, and then I can't forget the bottom, so five. So mine has five. Nice. Okay, so we have our 3D shapes built. How are we going to test for stability? Well, perhaps hmm, we could start by applying some forces on our shape. Maybe we can try shaking it. 
compressing it. What do you think? Uh oh. Here's my cube. I'm applying force to it. My hands. <sighs> my cube is collapsing. I did not expect that. Okay, did I do something wrong? Hold on, I'm trying to um, see what you mean here. Okay. It's, it's like an accordion almost. It's collapsing. Oh, Reina. You are encountering a challenge. This is so exciting. Let's thank our challenge. Thank you, challenge. Thank you, challenge, I guess. Because challenges really help us learn something new. It, when we calm down and, and, and just relax, we're going to take a deep breath again. We're going to practice. And let's observe what happens to other shapes when we apply forces to them. Maybe um, we can get inspired and find out more about your cube, okay? Can you go okay. first, Dora? Yeah, so here's my shape, the pentahedron, and I try to apply some forces by like shaking it. I'm trying to compress it by pushing down on it. And I notice that um, it's actually pretty stable. Huh. And I also noticed that the base of the pentahedron is a square, but it has triangular faces. Hmm. Let me test my shape, the tetrahedron. Let me see. I'm going to apply again some, I'm going to compress it, try to squish it. I'm going to uh, shake it. It's really not changing it. its shape much, is it? Hmm, no, it's not. So I'm starting to wonder if this has anything to do with like the triangle shape has anything to do with why your shapes don't collapse. I mean, my cube is made from all squares. The cube collapsed kind of easy. Like it didn't hold its shape very well. But both of you have triangles in your shape. So I'm wondering if triangles are the clue. Hmm. Raina and Dora, what do you think we can add to the cube to make it more stable? Uh, you can add a oh, triangle. Okay, I'm going to try adding a triangle, or at least turning one of these squares into a triangle. Maybe I'll do it on the bottom. And you can see how this bottom square can turn into a triangle. Let's see if that works. I'm testing out our ideas. I'm put, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Check this out. Okay, I added a dowel to the bottom square. And it's a little more stable. Huh. Wow, it does look way more stable. So just by adding one dowel, I made the base square into two triangles. Hmm. hmm. So let's, uh, let's reflect here a bit. The tetrahedron didn't wobble or collapse. The pentahedron that Dora has didn't collapse, but both the cube and the pentahedron have square bases, but the cube collapsed. What clues are we getting here? Well, I think the triangles are the key here. The triangles in both the pentahedron and the tetrahedron help support the faces. On the other hand, the square has all square faces. So we learned from our exploration of 2D shapes at the beginning of this video, that triangles actually hold their shape and squares don't hold their shape as much. Huh. Wonderful. So we tried so many things out. So let, how about if we use what we discovered so far about shapes and get started with our design challenge. Let's do it. 
Okay. So our design challenge is, remember, to build a stable structure that can hold some weight. Do you remember Chica from last time? Chica, Chica is back. <laughs> so, I would love to uh, build a structure for Chica to play inside, you know, like a, a playground in nature. <laughs> hmm. uh, do you have any ideas of what you want to build, Reina? Yes. So last time Oliver joined us. There's my doggy Oliver. Um, and I want to build like a structure or a stand to hold Oliver's bowl. Because right now his bowl is on the floor. So maybe it could be easier for him to eat if it was closer to his head. So the stand needs to be stable enough to hold Oliver's bowl and have it full of his snacky deliciousness. I know well, Laura had a really cool, I love Mr. Triceratops. What are you building for Mr. Triceratops? Uh, if you saw our video last week, you'll remember Mr. Triceratops. He is um, one of my son's toys. And he also has a bunch of friends that are also dinosaurs. And so I wanted to build um, kind of a ramp for them to play on, but also big enough for to store them on so that they're all like playing together. So that's what I'm gonna be building. Super cute. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Um, I wonder what's inspiring our designs. I started mine here because when I look at trees and how birds move from one branch to another, um, that maybe um, will get my structure for Chica to be very fun so Chica can move from one place to another freely and safely. What's inspiring you right now, Reina? I'm really inspired by my challenge, so by the cube. And I think if I approach it a little bit differently, like by reinforcing the squares and, and making them triangles, that I can make a sturdy structure, kind of maybe like a box shape for Oliver's food bowl. Yeah, I think that'll work. What about you, Dora? I'm super interested to hear about what you're thinking. So I was, you know, inspired by the fact that stable shapes can have a square base and that their faces are triangles and the triangles actually support them a little bit better. So I'm gonna build the ramp for my son's toys out of uh, square bases, but I'm gonna make the ramp going up using triangles and see if that'll still be stable. Nice. We learn so much more when we share ideas and ask questions. Thank you so much. I'm adding um, dowels um, to my tetrahedron from, from the cube to see if by making, oh, look at that, triangles. Hmm, it seems to be working, I think. I'm going to continue adding more triangles to my cube that way. I wonder if there's any tips to building newspaper structures that we can give people watching at home. There are so many tips that we can give. I love playing with newspaper dowels. One tip is that if you make a really long newspaper dowel, like maybe you use a, a big piece of newspaper, and if you make it and then you cut it in half, but hold your finger where you cut it, and add another piece of tape, then you will have two newspaper dowels. You can take the long ones and smaller ones. Oh, that's a really good tip. I just got a long one here. I'll see how that works. And sometimes if my newspaper dowel isn't long enough, I will take two dowels and I'll just put one inside of the other and then tape it. Huh. Like I'm showing here. So I'll get two, I'll put one inside the other, and then tape it. And now I can have a longer dowel. 
Oh, that's a really good tip. I didn't think about how to make longer dowels. Yeah, I, I, talking about how long or how short, I always have the scissors next to me because sometimes, you know, when it's too long, okay. Got it. Right, Raina said earlier that it's just paper. Yes. You cut it and it's too short. You can make it longer like Raina suggested, or you could just get some more paper and roll some more dowels. And just try it again. Hmm. I think this is coming along. It's taking me a lot of patience here because sometimes I think I got the, the length ready, but then it, it's too short. Hmm, let me see. I'm gonna move it here. That's the beauty of us taking our time figure, to figure things out. No, no rush. When yeah, you, I think um, that uh, when you're learning math or when you're learning engineering or really when you're learning anything at all, that having patience with yourself and giving yourself time to explore and to try new things and maybe things will fail and they won't work the way that you want them to, that that's part of the learning process. And give yourself time to mess up. If you're gonna mess, mess up, it's okay. We learn from our failures. Yep. Trust us kids, we are older, so. <laughs> oh, I've messed up a lot, so. <laughs> I've learned so much from all my mess ups. <laughs> Also learn when you share with others, when you share your ideas. Maybe if you're building this at home, you can talk to your sibling or your parent or get on the phone with a friend and explain to them your ideas and what you're trying to do. Maybe you can learn from them and they can learn from you. Absolutely. I'm almost ready to Test my structure with Chica. Oops, I've been doing a little testing with my bowl of Oliver's food. Oh, as you go, Raina, that's a good that's idea. Like, oh. Well, that's a really good idea. I think I'm almost ready to test too. I okay. have a structure that I think might work for this. Right. Okay. okay, just let me know when you're ready. Then I'll, um, I'm ready, I'm ready. You ready? Laura, are you ready too? I'm as ready as I will be for right now, yes. Okay, so so let me just, uh, because I can't, sometimes I, I'm like a kid, I cannot wait. Can I test test it with Chica and uh, um, Chica's other friend? Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're talking about Chica <laughs> and then Chica's friend <laughs> is the Wobble Wobble. <laughs> the turkey. <laughs> the turkey. So let's see. Because, you know, it's good to play with a friend. Chica, how do you like that? Yay! Turkey, how do you like that? Oh, I think turkey needs more space. It's feeling too squishy there. Maybe I should make it bigger, change the design. I have no problem with that because I want everybody to be happy. Hmm. I'm, can I test my structure yes, now, please? Yes. Okay. So here is my structure. So again, I used a cube, but I made it shorter this time and added some triangles. And let's see if it can hold Oliver's food bowl full of his food. Because, you know, Oliver likes to eat a lot. I think it works. It holds it up. Ta-da! Now wow. Oliver doesn't have to hurt his neck. 
Wow. Well, I'm going to test mine too. And I'm not going to test it with the dinosaurs. I'm actually going to test it with um, some of my favorite math and physics books because my degree is in math and science. And we did a lot of math and science in this video. So I'm going to put the books on top and see what, it, what happens. Oops. So you see how my structure, it holds up, but it's kind of like in the middle, super wobbly and starting to collapse. And we learned that stable structures don't collapse and mine kind of did collapse. So I'm gonna have to make a few changes on my design before it's ready. But that'll give you some great ideas on like how you can add to your structure to make it sturdier. So that was a successful test, even though it kind of failed. Oh, that's a different way of looking at success. Thank you, Reina. For sure. So, Remember like earlier, we were curious about seeing more squares in the human made structures like the buildings and the houses? Yeah, we, we were wondering if squares would be more stable than other shapes. Oh yeah, I have some pictures here to share with you. Whoa, okay, so these images, yeah, so these framing of these houses look a lot different from the house that we see. Because when we look at a house, we see lots of squares. But actually, as I look closer, there's lots of triangle shapes, like in the corners to help support. Ah, oh, so if we take a closer look at buildings and look at the framing, we could actually find those triangles. and see how they're supporting the square shape. So that's how it works. Oh, so it seems like we really discovered a lot of new things about shapes today. And we learned all these things about shapes and stability and forces and compression using just newspaper dowels. We sure did. And then that was so much fun too, that we encourage you all to continue building uh, at home with different materials to see what else you can discover about stability. And maybe you can come up, not maybe, for sure you will come up with your own ideas for testing too. Perhaps you decide, I don't know, to build a bridge that can hold your toy cars or maybe build a structure that can hold your shoes. Reina? Or maybe you could even build a structure that helps someone else in your family like my Oliver dog bowl holder. I love that idea of building something that can help someone else in your family. And if you do end up building something, please again, share your projects with, projects with us at maker at org. I'm gonna give another shout out to Jackson for his tiger den shelter, because I noticed that he used, you know, some square bases and some triangles using newspaper dowels to make his shelter for his tiger. So he already had some really great math and engineering ideas in there. Um, so thank you so much for sending that to us, Jackson. I hope you get to build another thing like a bridge or something to help your family. And so thank you all so much for joining us here today. We have even more resources for you if you would like to look at them and get more ideas and activities for hands-on making at home. Um, the Lawrence Hall of Science has some great ideas and resources for you. Raina, can you tell us what's up at the Lawrence? Yeah, absolutely. Please, please, please check out our website, lawrencehalloscience.org. We have some cool online programs available. We have some uh, story time. We have astronomy. We have the science of, of, of muscles and active anatomy. So whether you want to like explore space or build a stronger you, we have plenty of videos and also activities that you can do at home. Great. We also have a lot of activities for you um, at Maker Ed at Home. We have all these kinds of videos that range from different topics for you to learn and create. So you can check out those videos. We also have resources for you to explore and project guides. So if you would rather print out a one or two page project guide to do this activity at home, you can find those on our website. And we also have an events calendar. So if you're looking for more events like virtual conferences for educators where you can connect with other educators, um, if you want activities for your family, or if you want just like educational webinars and different uh, places to learn things, then you can check out our events calendar that will show you 
all of those events all in one place um, by day or by topic. So please, please check that out. And thank you all so much for joining us this week. Um, again, please share your projects with us. Uh, next week, you should join us for a visual poetry activity where you are going to have a language arts inspired activity where you will tap into the power of words to communicate your ideas by creating some poetry together. Um, thank you all so much again for joining us. And as always, we'll be learning in the making. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much.